Today we're going to be doing the front and rear brakes on this 2013 Honda Odyssey. We've already done the rear brakes and calipers. We're going to go over to the driver's side now and do the same thing and show you how we were able to do this. So these are all the parts you're going to need to do a complete brake job including rear calipers. These are the rear pads. These are the front pads. These are the rear calipers. These are the front rotor numbers. And these are the rear rotor numbers. First thing that we're going to do to get started here is hit the caliper mounting bolts uh, with PB blast. It's a 17 millimeter on the bracket bolts. These are 12 mil millimeter to get the caliper off the bracket if you need to do that. The easiest way to do this is put the wrench onto the bolts and then hit it with a rubber hammer any way you can to break it free. There you go. Let all the rage out. And then just do the same for the bottom. So because we're also going to be replacing the caliper, we need to break the brake line banjo bolt loose first. We're going to do that while it's still mounted. We hit it with PB blast, and again, just give it some light taps with a hammer if you need to, and just break it loose. We're not going to take it all the way off, because we don't want the brake fluid to go everywhere yet. And there it goes. That's good enough. It's nice and loose. Okay, so we've removed the two uh, mounting bolts. We're now going to use a screwdriver to just pry the entire caliper assembly and bracket off of the rotor. Take the light for you. There we go. And now using a metal coat hanger that we scavenged, we're just going to loop it through and hang the caliper from the suspension while we work on the rotor and prep the new caliper for assembly. And so now with that secured, we can take a look at the rotor we have here. So these rotors have been off before. This one still might be loose. You want to check that and see if it's any wobble to it. This is Safety nut. Yeah, we'll get to that. Let's see if it comes loose. Nope. No. So this rotor is on there pretty tight. There are uh, the emergency brakes pads are in the inside. And there's a rubber grommet here that we can remove to uh, to loosen them if needed. But as you saw, just by hitting it with a hammer, this one came free. Now, before these are special rotors are really nice. You can run a, a bolt through here. There's one here and one here and you drive the bolts in and that will help bring the rotor off of the back of the, the spindle. Beautiful. So you don't want to breathe any of this dust, but hold your breath while you do this. We're going to hit it with an air hose now, get all the brake dust off. And now with some brake clean, we're going to hit the major actuating points of the brake system on top and again on the bottom. You can clean the whole area off actually. We have some brake disc quiet goop here, and all you see is I put it on all four pads in the back, ripped off a little piece of paper, and now I'm just going to smear it across all the backs of the brake pads and let it dry before we assemble it onto the caliper. We also need to spray down the rotor with the, the brake clean spray. So we got some brake clean here. We're going to spray the rotor down real quick, both sides, and then wipe it clean. The important part is the outside critical edge where the brake pad rides. Yep. Take your rag and dry it off. It's a lot easier too if you do them all at the same time. As an extra preventative measure from rust and corrosion, you can apply some Never Seize to help things stay nice and fresh. So here's our fresh brand new caliper. Uh, the instructions say not to disassemble this, and we didn't do it for the other side. We left everything assembled. We do check the the torque on these uh, caliper bolts here. We just make sure they were snug from the factory. You don't want those to be loose when you're doing this. Nice and good slide. They're already lubed as well, the pins. And we have new uh, shim hardware here. And before we put these on, we're gonna add a little bit of never seize to these and then assemble them into the, the bracket. It's a lot easier to apply it to the shim than to the caliper. Last time we did the caliper, it made kind of a mess. But this way, it goes on nice. Don't need a lot. So these shims are gonna go into the caliper this way, down. And they're going to mount onto these posts right here. This post is going to go into the groove right here like this. So this is going to go in like this and push on. So make sure the little brass tabs are on the inside edge as you push this on to the back of the caliper. Or the side of the caliper, I should say. Just like so. And that will look like this. 
You also want to make sure you lube the, the side tabs of the brake pads here. This will make sure that they're able to slide and they don't freeze in place and cause one pad to overwear versus the other side. You only need a little bit on each tab and it, you can then proceed to install them. So now line up your brake pad with the shims you installed. You're going to have to play with the tabs a little bit as you do it, but eventually you'll be able to uh, man man maneuver it into place and push it down all the way into the, the top of the piston there. One thing to note here is we had to redo this. You want to make sure you do the front side of the caliper pad first. We were not able to install this side with the back pad in first. So do the front, and now you should be able to put the, assemble the other pad in the, to the back of the caliper. A lot easier with three hands. <laughs> and it should look like that when you're done. So on the back of the new caliper, there's a plastic plug. You're going to want to remove that. We have a brand new banjo bolt here. And just make sure that it threads in OK. Perfect. As we remove the brake line here, some people, you can crimp them if the car's brand new. This car is eight or nine years old, and the rubber could be dry rotted. So we're not going to crimp the brake line, but I have a catch can here to stop it. You can also leave the cap on your brake fluid reservoir so less brake fluid will, will uh, leak out as you do this. With a 14 millimeter wrench, because we already broke that bolt free, remove the caliper from the, the mount we had in place. And as you remove the brake, uh, the banjo bolt, there's going to be those two washers. You want to make sure both of those washers are accounted for. You don't want to triple them up or double them up. You want to make sure there's one on each side here. So. It's hard to get a shot of this, but it's on the back, just as we showed. We already broke it loose. So we thought. <laughs> there it goes. And proceed to remove it. Let the brake fluid drain. That's it. And now there is a channel that the brake line sits in on the back of the caliper. You just gotta pull that up too. Make sure you get the washer. Yep, there's the washer. Just make sure that the brake line doesn't have any washers stuck to it when you go to reassemble. You might need a small screwdriver also to get the, the brake line off of the caliper all the way. There it goes. Let's drop it in the pan. Yep, and there's, see right there? There's the other washer. There it goes. Check front and back to make sure there's no washers on it. Perfect. So we put the banjo bolt in with the washer on the back side. We are now going to add the washer to the opposite side. So it's sandwiched. And now we install the caliper. There's a groove here. This is where the brake line is going to sit and fall in. If it doesn't go in all the way, as you tighten down the banjo bolt, it will press in. Make sure the bleeder screw is facing up. If it's not, you have the wrong caliper for the wrong side. It's going to take us three hands to do this, so I'm going to put the camera down, but I'm just going to hold the caliper and we're going to assemble that banjo bolt into the uh, housing. And as I said, once you get the banjo bolt started, you can line up the brick line with the groove on the caliper there. And then once it's lined up, use the wrench to uh, just drive it home. Put it on tight. You don't have to snug it yet. Once we get the caliper mounted again, we can make sure that it's nice and tight. Now, if you don't have three hands like us, you can rehang that caliper with the, the clothes uh, hanger that you have or whatever you have. But now we're going to reassemble the rotor. You want to make sure you line everything up the way it came off. You also want to transfer the rubber grommet from the old rotor for the dust cover to, uh, that works the, the brakes on top. So this is the well. That is the original set screw that came that held the rotor on. You want to line that hole up with a little hole. Put that again. Right there. Right there. And we're going to do that now. I got a which will look something like this. And then we push this on. And now we can reassemble. And now we can reassemble the caliper onto the rotor. I'm going to hold this in place. You can also use a lug nut. If you have something long enough, you can run it down the threads there and hold the rotor in place where it needs to go. Beautiful. And now just reassemble those 17 millimeter bolts. And now just torque down those bolts. I don't have a torque spec, but we're going to do them nice and Hulk strength strong, right? Right. So we're going to breed the, the brake line now for the rear. And there's a number of products on the market to uh, vacuum bleed them if you're all by yourself. You can hook these up. This is a nice one here. You assemble this onto the brake line. It has a catch can, and it will draw the fluid through into the little can. But um, And there's other ones here that 
all do a great job. But if you don't have any of those, all you need is a shampoo bottle and some uh, clear rubber hose. I don't remember the size of the hose. I've had this for quite some time, but I made this. And I'm going to show you how to do it with uh, two people and a shampoo bottle. So we've broken the bleeder screw loose. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. And now I'm going to attach, I have the wrench on there still, and I'm going to attach the hose I made here onto the top of the bleeder screw. And with that attached, we won't lose any fluid. This is tight. And now we're going to start the van, leave it in park. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the bleeder screw now and push the brake pedal down to the floor. And as we'll see, there goes all the fluid, there goes all the air bubbles, and once it's to the floor, I close the bleeder valve. You can raise the pedal up now. And with that, I will open the valve again and push it to the floor. And you do this until you see no more air bubbles, but we are actually flushing the system. We have fresh fluid in the reservoir, so we are draining all the dirty fluid out, and we'll see what that looks like. You can already see it looks pretty dark in there. I'll show you at the end what this looks like. <clears throat> but we're going to do this about 20, 25 times probably until we're done. Just closing the valve, bring the brake pedal up, and then I open the valve, push the brake pedal down. There goes all the fluid in the air. I close the valve, bring the brake pedal up, and we just go back and forth with this. Push it down, and I close the valve. We'll come back in a few minutes when we're all done. Make sure to check the reservoir every five to six pumps. You don't want to drop the fluid and the brake fluid reservoir down too far. All right, so we just finished. I have the bleeder tight. I'm going to remove the hose, let that drain into the catch can. There we go. And let's take a look at all the nasty fluid we took out. That's pretty black. <laughs> so that should be good. I'm going to give this one final torque here. Oh, that's on there. That's good. And now just be sure to replace your rubber cap to it and reassemble the wheel. One other thing to mention, when you're bleeding the entire brake system, you want to start at the brake caliper that is furthest away from the ABS system. Usually it's under the driver's seat. So we already did the passenger rear side. We just did the driver rear side. Uh, as we do the brakes now, we're going to go over to the passenger front side. We're just going to do the pads and rotors over there and we're gonna bleed that side, and then when we're all done, we'll bleed the driver's side front, which is closest to the system. So we're gonna hit the bolts with some PB Blast again, and let that soak in for a little bit. So now using the 14 millimeter, we're gonna break the caliper free from the mounting bracket, and we're gonna hang that up using the clothes hanger again. And do the same for the bottom. So one thing to note with the front caliper is there is a 19 millimeter uh, bolt on the back side of it. You might have to put a wrench on that to be able to turn the bolt without that boot ripping for the slider pin there. As you see that, you see how he's holding that. And do the same for the bottom if needed. Once you have those bolts removed, you can insert a screwdriver into the top of the caliper and just pry back and that will re release it from the bracket with any luck. And then use your clothes hanger to hang that up. So we're going to take a wire brush first. We're going to clean off all the rust we see. Make sure it's nice and smooth in there. And then we're going to push the pistons back in. Make sure you have your brake reservoir cover uh, open as well. There's a number of different ways you can do this. We're going to put a socket into each one of the pistons. And use the piston driver here to put them in. You can also just put a brake pad over them. It can get a little uh, off-center sometimes when you do that, but this will work. You just go back and forth between the two pistons a couple times until they're all the way down and flush. And you see as you turn that, it drives the piston in. And as I said, you want to make sure that the reservoir cover is off of the brake. I already did it. So as you see, we have the caliper hanging from the coat hanger. Now, if this is the first time the brakes are being done on any vehicle, usually there's a screw uh, holding the rotor in place. Uh, we've done these brakes before. We don't usually put the screw back in because sometimes it's really hard to get out and it will strip and that's a whole other video. <laughs> but we are now going to use the 19 millimeter uh, wrench to remove the caliper mounting bracket and the brake pads. It's always good to have a rubber mallet to 
strike the wrench with to break them free. And with that bracket removed, we're going to take that over to the bench and we'll get that cleaned up and show you how to uh, replace the pads and re-grease the sliders. And the rotor, our rotor is loose. If it's not loose, start hitting with a hammer. If it doesn't work, get a bigger hammer. If it still doesn't work, you can check out my video on how to use two bolts to push the rotor off from the back side. These rotors also have a screw hole in the front, just like the rear. You can drive those uh, M8 1.25 uh, bolts into the rotor and push it off from the, the spindle. Got the bracket up here on the bench. There's these little uh, spring clips here that hold the pads in place. Uh, these pads look pretty good actually, not that bad in the front, but we decided to do all four since we had the, the day to do them all. So first we move the pins. There you go. Rotor should just push right out or push right in. Oh, that one's frozen. Wow. That one came out really nice. This one. I need a hammer. Thank you, sir. And there it goes. So we're going to remove the, uh, the shims here. Just put a screwdriver in behind it. Make sure I'm in camera. Pry those off like so. Our kit came with new shims. If yours did not, I would suggest you get new ones. Otherwise, you're going to have to clean those up and it just won't be as good as these. <laughs> So we're now going to attack this with a wire brush and get all the crud off of it. We'll come back after that. So one thing to note is you want to make sure you match up the pads you took off with the ones you're putting on. We already did that for the other side. As you see, the brake squealer here is on this side. and It was on the same side as the old one, and the other side is just universal. You can see how much pad the war how you can see how worn the pad is here by the difference in height. Like I said, this one was frozen, so it caused the rear one to, uh, or the front one to wear more. So we got the front cap or bracket here cleaned up, and we're going to replace the shims now. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Never Seize on the back of it so it won't rust to the, the caliper uh, bracket there. You only know, need a little, just like that. Do both of those, and we'll slap them on. All right, so these go on pretty easy. You're just going to line up, and these posts here, they're going to go into the groove right here on the shim. And that will look like so. And do the same for the other side. Nice. All right, so now we're going to inspect the caliper uh, sliding pins. Uh, these look pretty good. They're, they're bouncing back. But we're going to hold the boot here. And slowly twist, it's hard to see this on camera, but we're going to slowly twist and just remove the pin from the, the grease boot. Just like that. And there we can see. So we're going to wipe this clean. And we're going to use some uh, picks and some screwdrivers and gently clean out some of the old grease in there. And then we have some, uh, some new grease that we're going to apply to it and just reassemble. Alright, so I'm just going to apply some to the pin. You don't want to put too much on there. That looks pretty good. And what works good is to compress the boot when you put the pin back in so you don't get any air trapped in there on the boot. Otherwise you'll get like a bubble in the boot when it, when it compresses and you're not going to like that. See? Looks good. If you have air trapped in there this will bubble out like a balloon. And do the same for the back or the other pin. Again, push the boot down. You can twist the pin as you insert. And pop. There we go. Looks good. Line up your rotor. If you're reusing that rotor mounting screw, you got to make sure the screw hole is lined up. That goes on. And now the bracket goes on behind it. I'm not going to be able to get a shot of that, but just line up the bracket and tighten the bolts. As I mentioned before, the front pad will not have the brake squealer on it. And it's just going to slide into the shims that we installed onto the uh, mounting bracket. Um, uh, never sees to the, the tips there, the wings, just a little bit is all that is needed. That will help it slide and stop it from freezing. So here's the door trick.
beautiful. Back one's usually a nightmare, but try and try. Try from different angles. And eventually, you should be able to get it on. Same thing with the other side. These are the little wing pins that go on. They'll, they're going to go on the, the back side of the pads, and the top will be towards the center of the pads. It's still that light. Here you go. So sorry. We had to use three hands there to keep the pads from flying off, but you want to make sure you push in the caliper uh, pin uh, boots there, and you put the caliper on, usually from the bottom first, and then clamshell to the top like that. And with that in place, you can now add the bolts back in there. You might have to use the wrench again on the back side, the 19 millimeter, to hold that nut right there to uh, tighten those down. That's it. With any luck, you should be all done now. You can uh, put your wheel back on, torque it down to 100 foot-pounds. Now, we're going to continue flushing our brake system as we discussed when we did the rear brakes, but if you're all done now, you can put the, the top back on your brake fluid canister, uh, start the vehicle, leave it in park, and pump your brakes until you feel pressure there. At that point, you should be good to drive.